Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this Bally flip-flop pinball machine. And if you haven't been watching, boy, you've been missing out on all kinds of cool stuff. It's an old EM from 1976, and it's pretty complex. There's a bunch of stuff going on on it. And at the end of the last video, we had just finished working on the bottom of this playfield, had plugged it in, and we're actually playing a game with it limping along. I mean, we haven't done much, you know, of the fine-tuning yet. And we had the pop bumper catch on fire. Literally catch on fire. It was smoking and everything. So you might want to go walk back and watch that. Um, but today we're going to work on the top side of the, the playfield. So I figured we probably ought to see why in the hell this thing <laughs> caught on fire. I don't see any reason that it should have. The only thing I can think is that maybe we had it adjusted too close and that the uh, coil was stuck in from the two contacts constantly being closed. But uh, it didn't look like that in the video. And uh, I don't know. But it did melt. There was like a fire. I mean, <laughs> it melted part of the contact off. So I don't know what that's all about. So we got to watch that first. Eventually we'll have to fix that, obviously. Um, I don't know why there is a l electrical tape here either. So, you know, we got we got some issues going on here. So I'm going to turn it back on and see what happens. Look, they've got... Okay, so they've got... See, this line is black. That's, that goes up to one of the, the light bulb. So that line, they've got connected here to the uh, switch that scores. So whenever it scores, this pulls in, and it makes this switch connect here. So I don't know if that's right or not. Let's look at the other pop bumper. The other pop bumper did not catch on fire. So it may be a good uh, example of how it's supposed to be. Yeah, I think we got things different. Okay, so on this one, this wire goes up to the light, and then the other side of the light connects to the wire there. So that other side of the other side of the light did connect to the wire there, but that's all loose. Uh, but the wire that comes from the socket goes to this top switch, and then the bottom switch is two white wires that must run off and score something. So on this side there's the two white wires and they've got the yellow wire connected to the yellow wire. So it is, it is correct. So I don't know. Something bad happened though. That wasn't how it was supposed to be. It could have just been that this wire here was loose and touching something it wasn't supposed to. I don't know. We're going to turn it back on and see if it catches fire. Eventually we'll take all of that off of there and uh, replace everything with uh, other parts. So I'm going to turn it on. We'll see if that locks on or starts smoking or anything. It literally had had fire coming off of it before though. Oh, I'm not plugged in. I should plug the machine in. Alright, so we're plugged in. Let's see what happens. What do you think, Matt? Is it going to catch on fire? Uh, it's already burned out. Things that burn can't burn again. Okay, you see any smoke? No. Did y'all see any smoke? Nobody said anything. They must not see any either. Okay, so now I'm going to start the game and see if that changes anything and makes something smoke. Matthew, do you see any smoke? No. I think we're good. 
I think we're good to work on it. What do you think? Yeah. Should I tempt fate and connect the two switches that would make the pop bumper pop? Sure. Why not, right? Only a straight up person <laughs> would not do that. <laughs> Let me touch it with something metal. Yeah. <laughs> For maximum conduction. And I haven't been drinking too much caffeine today. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to do. I think what was going on was the uh, the switch must have just been stuck together and it just overheated the coil or something. But I don't know why the switch itself would be doing it. That was weird. Where was the smoke coming from? From the all this area. You can't tell if it was the switch or the coil that was actually it's flaming. The switch. Oh, I see the wire, yeah, the wire was actually yeah, about this. This is fine. I'm talking about when you have it on a new video card. Matt is whining about the coils whining, like all of you are. So the coils are whining, just to prove that to Matt, because these four relays are on at the same time, because these four flags are flipped over, because the, pin, the play field's upside down, so... <laughs> is that better? No. <laughs> Y'all right now? Look, it's only one coil, actually, so we can fix it. Then you won't be so upset. You won't have such a bad evening. Well, then I have to find something else to be mad about. See, that's the thing. I learned that a long time ago. I worked at a grocery store, and there was always one guy there that everybody complained about. And you know what would happen? He Eventually, they'd fire his ass. And you know what would happen? They'd pick the next guy. They'd find the next guy they wanted to whine about. So sometimes you just have to live with that guy who just, you know. <laughs> yep. All right. So the whining is because one of the relays is whiny. It'll be all right. We'll clean it. Okay. Uh, this thing's not catching on fire, so I don't know what the hell happened. The, 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 the little switch must have been stuck or something. I went back and looked at the video. I couldn't tell from the video. I may have had some kind of trash on it or something, and that caught on fire. I don't know. But it burnt the entire contact off of the switch so so we'll end up rebuilding all that but the purpose of this video is we're going to work on the top of the play field so let's go do that okay folks so this is what the top looks like and this is what we're starting with we're going to clean it all up get it looking nice and then uh see if we need to touch it up or anything i'm hoping we don't but we might have to down through here but unfortunately it's got mylar over the wear. Gun, gun, gun. <laughs> so whenever they do that, uh, you kind of screwed. You, the, the problem is you can't remove the mylar without severely damaging the paint underneath it. So the pro if you put the mylar over wear, you can't clean or fix the wear because there's mylar over it. So you can heat up the mylar or freeze it and very carefully take it off. And you'll only lose about 20% of the paint. And so a lot of people do this on newer machines. And they go, oh, no, it's no problem. I peeled it all the way off my Adams family. Well, look at this one carefully. This isn't the condition that the paint is in underneath that mylar. Right? So that's the level of damage that we've got on such an old machine. If you pull that mylar off, see how there's paint missing right there that's chipped away already? If you pull that mylar off, I don't care how good you do it, you're going to lose a bunch of paint. And then even worse, instead of the paint being like a natural wear pattern, it'll be a circular pattern. So there's just not a good way to do it. Sometimes the stuff's loose or something, but of course no such luck this time. So we're going to clean it up as good as we can. Hopefully, maybe a bunch of that dirt is just on the mylar. That'd be good. What do you think, Matt? Probably. Matt. Matt's an optimist, I guess. <laughs> there you go. But it's, it's not like mylar on a newer machine, people. This is on an old machine with an old wood play field that has cracks all over it. I, I don't think people understand like how screwed up these are that we're working on. Like, look at that. Oh, the paint would guarantee stay on the piler. Look at that crap. 
it's completely destroyed. Do you see all the cracks? It's not like there's a couple cracks. I mean, it's every single part of the play field is covered in cracks. So. That's what it's looking like under the mylar. <laughs> so, but this is really, this play field's not that bad. I mean, most of the ones I work on look pretty much like this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take everything off of the play field and get it down to bare wood, basically, or as close to bare wood as we can. And then we can work from there um, and figure out how far we need to go. We may have to repaint part of it. If I can take the mylar off or I can figure something out, we'll do that. But that's probably not. Okay, so this is how it ended up with everything off of it. It's filthy. A um, little bit of wear around the pot bumper there. Uh, but it also has mylar around the pot bumper. But the mylar is cut through right there. Which is why it's like that. Just dirt everywhere. Matt was making an interesting point. He's saying, if you look, there's a little line around the mylar that's clean. So he's saying it may have shifted, or it's just the ball can't touch that part of the wood. But what it says to me is, is that it's probably at least that clean under the mylar. So we'll see. I took out the uh, flip-flop unit. We'll have to do a whole thing on that. Pretty, pretty dirty. That's pretty fairly heavy wear there. But that kind of stuff you don't really want to touch up. You just leave the wear. It'll actually look pretty good once it's clean. It just looks bad because it's dirty. Um, so we're going to clean it. I'm going to go real careful on this though because I don't want to lose any of this if I can help it. I just want to clean it. So I'm going to take a uh, paper towel and I'm just going to spray like Windex on it. <laughs> to clean it off immediate, uh, originally. A lot of people use like uh, Novus and stuff, but man, this thing's filthy. I mean, it needs a degreaser or something. You might even have to use 409 or something. 
And then people have asked, do you put it on the rag or do you put it on the play field? Well, if it's this damn dirty, you put it right on the play field. <laughs> I mean, this thing, this is about as dirty as they get. Um, so we're going to go heavy duty. So I'm, I'll clean it up a little bit. Uh, we're going to use a magic eraser eventually, but I'm going to clean it up a little bit and just try to get as much as the, of the surface dust all, dirt off that I can by hand, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so here's after our first rough cleaning. Just trying to get all the loose stuff off. You can see that the the uh, mylar is lighter than the playfield, which means that it's cleaner. So hopefully that'll clean up even better. Filthy. All right, so now I'm going to use Magic Eraser, um, which you can use with um, rubbing alcohol. And it's basically sandpaper. You're basically taking off the top, very top layer of everything on the play field. And then also, it's very small. Like, it's made out of this uh, melamine foam. That's very tiny, just the way that it's created or the way that it's made. And it'll get down in all those little cracks and clean them out. So, you know, that's just a ton of little cracks. All that black you're seeing is not on the surface. It's like in little micro cracks in the wood, which is why the stuff works so good because it's so, the, the composition of it's so small. So it'll get down inside of that. So we're going to go to town on it, but you got to be careful. If you rub too hard, it'll just literally just sand the paint right off you won't have anything left and so whenever you've got areas like this that are already loose where it already looks rough <laughs> uh, you got to be careful it'll look a lot rougher whenever you're done if you don't watch it so I'm going to get on it a little bit and we'll start cleaning it and see how much better we can get it to look so hopefully it doesn't uh hopefully it cleans This is what it looks like after you go crazy with the magic eraser on it. All of that stuff you see is dust from the magic erasers. That little spot over there is still wet. That's why it looks darker. Um, so I'll show you a close up of that area we were working on. You can see how there's damage, you know, but once we clean it and get wax on it, that's going to look a lot better. So I've been thinking, the worst wear is here, but part of it is under the, the, the um, Mylar. The Mylar, it's not really all that bad. They did a pretty good job of cleaning it before they put it on. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not really... It's nowhere near as bad as it looked whenever we started. There was a bunch of dirt that was on top of the mylar. So, for instance, that line that we were looking at right around the edge, if you look, you can't even see it anymore because now the play field and the uh, mylar are the, just as light as that line was. But they're still, you know, heavy wear. But look at all the little cracks and stuff. You just, you can't really get it any better than that. That's about as good as you can get. If I keep going on that, it's going to tear it off. But you don't have to get so worried about it. From a distance, it's going to look just fine. So I think what I'm going to touch up, Matt was mentioning too, I think I want to try to...
tighten up all of those black circles around the inserts there, make those look a little better, and then call it a day. Now you could, you know, if you do those, then why not do these? And if you're if you're if you've got the black marker out, why not fix that? <laughs> right? And so you've got the black marker, why not fix the lines on the door? You know, so you got to know when to stop. So where I'm going to stop is, I'm just going to redo the insert uh, circles so it looks a little better. We're going to clean the hell out of it and then wax the hell out of it. Oh, and, by, and if, you, if you do put any paint anywhere, you have to clear coat the area that you painted. So I'm going to uh, re-black those circles and then clear coat just that spot and then uh, we'll start waxing it and putting it all back together and it'll look pretty good. So let me clean it up first. I'll clean as much of this uh, magic eraser dust off of it as I can and uh, then we'll, we'll see if we can ink in those circles. Okay, so we got most of the dust off. I'm going to go over it one more time and then we're going to start Painting the little black things back in just by hand with a ink pen, not a not a uh, a an acrylic ink pen, not a uh, sharpie or anything like that. That'd be bad. Don't do that. Um, so we'll see if we can get these little circles to look a little better, and then uh, it'll be ready for some wax. I think it's going to end up looking pretty good, actually. It's got it's got wear, but it's like a good minimal amount of wear. The one by the pop bumper there, if you look, these pop bumpers have nails that are exposed anyway, <laughs> so I'm not too worried about it, you know. Not bothering me much. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to wipe it down one more time, and then, because uh, there's a little bit, you can barely see a little bit of the dust still there like that. You just don't want to get any of that under your clear coat whenever you get to that point. But, um, and I'm going to go get my acrylic paint pen, and we'll see if we can touch any of those up. Okay, so I inked them in a little bit. That one there's the roughest one, the one above the green one. Because when you ink them in, you have to make them, or try to make them, the same size they were originally. So if there is more paint missing... So like around that, the red is missing. So I can't just make the black circle bigger or look worse. <laughs> so you just got to ignore that the red is missing. And your whole point is you're trying to make it look better but not look like you touched it up. Very hard to do. And you got to know when to quit. Right? So a lot of times we'll repaint stuff. You, if you go watch the stuff I've repainted, it's because there's major areas missing, you know. So, like, if this whole piece was missing, I'd repaint it. But it's there. It's just worn, you know. And I can't paint on top of the mylar. That's not going to work. And I can't remove the mylar. So if the area right next to the mylar is a little worn like it is under the mylar, I kind of got to leave it that way. So we, we touched up the black, though. I'll show you the little paint pens we use. I actually, somebody actually sent me these. I, I was using a different type, but somebody uh, mailed me these. They're real, they're very inexpensive. But what, you, what you're looking for is acrylic, water-based, water-based, acrylic, water-based. So the reason you want acrylic is because we're going to clear coat it, which sounds crazy, but it, if you use, uh, let's say you use a Sharpie, Okay, well then you don't have to clear coat it, you can just leave it like that, but they have all kinds of chemicals and shit in them, and it just, it, it, it they, it, it bleeds into the wood. Yeah, it bleeds into the wood, it, it's not really a paint, and the, when, then whenever you wax it, you have issues, and it's just, it's ugly, do not do it. So the way you get the cleanest look is you use, a, you could use it like enamel paint, but then it wouldn't really, um. It wouldn't really have the same sheen and everything. Yeah. Matt, and Matt's here. He's actually pretty good at it painting. It might take the paint off that's underneath it, too. Yeah. So the best way to do it, acrylic paint. And the good thing about acrylics is if you screw something up, you can just wipe it off with water. You know, you can clean it up. Black, maybe not so easy. So you might get black staining the red next to it or something. But you use acrylic paint, 
and then you have since it's acrylic, if I take a wet rag and rub on this, or even if I wax it, um, some of that's going to come back off. So you have to clear coat it um, to protect it after you do that. So we have a couple issues with the clear coat. Everybody always says, "How do you clear coat? How do you clear coat?" Look, I don't do it the way that uh, you know the professional high-end guys do it. I just use spray paint. So I literally just spray on Krylon uh, spray paint to clear coat it. And I don't do the whole play field. And so the reason I don't do the whole play field is because there's crap all over the place. I mean, I'd, I'd get it all over all the switches, and it's not really necessary. The finish is still fine in most of the areas. It's just this area in the middle is worn, and we need to protect it, and we need to protect the acrylic paint that we just put on. I don't mask it. If you mask it, you're going to end up with a line where the tape stops and the the uh, the uh, play field is. So our saving grace is that we're going to wax it. So the wax, basically, whenever you clear it, right now it kind of has a dull sheen. See the see the uh, mylar there is more shiny, and the play field is dull. So the reason it's dull is because we've stripped all the wax off of it whenever I was uh, cleaning it with the Magic Eraser. So it's basically pretty much clean. I think you can do that with naphtha, can't you? Naphtha? Um, you can do that with uh, lighter fluid, actually, which, I, which is mostly naphtha, yeah. Like Ronsonol? Uh, Matt knows more about it than me. Don't pour lighter fluid on your play field without checking a spot first. <laughs> but, oh, definitely. Absolutely. But uh, basically, I have people ask me all the time, hey, there's a spot I want to touch up on my play field, and uh, how do you clear coat it? So one of the reasons I don't show you how to clear coat it is because you can <clears throat> this up <laughs> so easily that I don't, I don't want to make people think that it's as easy as it might look in my videos, right? To me, it's really easy, but look at what I've done. I took everything off the play field, with, you know, with some exceptions, but everything's off the play field, and then I have rubbed all the wax off the play field. So this is a really clean play field, even though it's damaged. There's, there's no uh, oil anywhere on it. Wax is an oil. If there's any wax left, whenever you spray clear on it, it you're going to have a big problem. Like It, it has little... Um, it basically doesn't stick to the wax. So you'll have little pinholes all over the place. And it's not, orange pill isn't even the right word for it. It's like, it'll be puddled and stuff. It's just a big freaking mess. So if you've got your pinball and like you want to retouch this, and so you retouch that one circle, well, you, you kind of can't do it the way I do it because the way I'm going to do it is just take a spray paint can and go tss, 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 and just spray over it and it's not going to be a problem. And I'm not going to tape anything. It's just going to kind of feather into the other stuff. And then whenever it dries and I wax it, the sheen will be the same all over the place. And I'm putting the wax on top of it. Well, if you're just trying to do one little part of your machine, if you don't have everything stripped off and you haven't taken all the wax off the machine, whenever you spray it, anything that has wax on it is going to be a big freaking mess. So, you know, it. I can't really... <laughs> Uh, if you're just doing a little spot, you can't really do it the way I do it. So that's why I don't ever show anybody. And plus, people criticize every freaking thing you do. So if I show you me doing this, everybody and their brother is going to be talking about how it's the wrong way to do it. Oh, that won't work, even though I've done a hundred freaking machines like this. But you can see, like, in the in the shooter lane, see how that's all like a light wood color? It's because by using the magic eraser and cleaning it up and everything, we've stripped everything off of that area where it was worn so it's down to bare wood there's nothing on it there's no wax there's not even like lacquer on that part or clear coat or anything so that's one of the that's one of the issues and then the other issue on this particular machine is there's freaking mylar in the way so the only choice i really have is to clear coat over freaking mylar but these are decisions i did not make so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some clear coat i'm going to paint this area right just freehand. I'm not going to tape it or nothing. Down to here, and then I'm going to tape, I'm going to paint up this area, making sure to get over the things that I've painted. I'm going to try to, you know, pretty much stop at the edge of the red so that it blends in fairly good. And then whenever I wax it, you won't even see the parts that have been cleared and the parts that haven't. 
And I'm not going to do 20 coats. I'm going to do one decent coat. I'm not going to go crazy thick, but I'm, I'm not going to just mist it either. Um, and then what I'll probably do too is, since I'm going to get it on the Mylar, I'll also do the top part of the Mylar, just so the, the whole pieces of Mylar have been cleared. So that when we're done, there will be a bright spot, kind of about like that, where I, where, where I have uh, sprayed the clear on. Another thing is, since I'm clearing it, basically this will never get any cleaner. So you got to get it about as good as you can get it, and because it's going to be locked in once you get that clear coat on there. And like I, like I mentioned earlier, you can go crazy on the red paint and everything. Like I could try to get that a little better and everything, but red's kind of hard to match anyway. And this whole area has a little wear. You know, it's kind of borderline, but I'm just going to leave it. I think we're going to be, be fine. So uh, I'll grab the clear coat and I'll show you what it looks like once it goes on. All right, so we threw it on there. <laughs> we're trying not to breathe it in. And uh, it's got a little bit of orange peel in it, like we were talking about, but it uh, it came out pretty good. So we'll uh, we'll let it dry overnight, and then we'll wax the crap out of it and see what we end up with. But as you can see from a playing position, it looks pretty damn good, really. That's what you're looking for. That's good enough. Okay, folks, so it's the next day after we cleared it. The clear went over the Mylar too. You can see, so we basically sprayed this part, but didn't spray this part. Right? You can't even hardly tell where it was painted, where it wasn't. And we haven't waxed it yet. So whenever you wax it, it'll blend right in. So, you know, it, it, we don't like to get too much into detail on it because it's not, there's, there's nothing really to it. You just, we just spray paint it on. Now, we don't get it completely level. You notice we didn't level the inserts or anything. So, be your own judge. Okay, so we're going to start uh, waxing it and cleaning it. Uh, I leave the bulbs in until I wax it, and then I swap all the bulbs. Because if you uh, swap the bulbs now, you get wax all over the bulb. Simple as that. Um, so, we're going to wax, 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 wax. See how nice we can get it to look. Get the new lights on it. Start slowly putting it, everything back on with new rings, and it'll make this sucker look look great.
Okay, people, here is a better look at that flip unit. It has four little switches on the front that it's still filthy, I haven't cleaned anything yet. It has four switches on the front. And um, there are bulbs behind each one. Now, someone has put a little hat on them. To make the light face a certain way. It's pretty neat. Uh, and then there are five posts that mount here on the front. And then on the back there are four coils. So those coils have the ability to crazy. Those coils, whenever they pull in, it's going to pull this slug. So basically a coil is an electromagnet. It's going to pull, pull this big slug of metal up into about the middle of here. You might say, well, why doesn't it pull this side? Because it's thinner <laughs> and it feels lighter. So that's, that might be aluminum. But anyway, it's going to pull this in till it's centered in that coil, or try to, you know, which is attached to this plunging mechanism that if done quick enough will flip the freaking flip thing back over. <laughs> so I don't know if, I guess the way it's made is that it'll go both ways. So if it does it right now, it'll go either way. What an ingenious little design. So basically when the game starts, if they're I don't know if it resets them at the beginning of the game or not, but it can it can make them go whichever way it wants, and the way that it knows which side it's on is whether or not it's hitting this switch. Pretty wild. Now remember, one of them was not working, and that's just simply because the wires broke loose. Um... So let's solder the wire back on. That one will work just fine. Interesting little unit. So I'm going to clean it up, and that's the final thing to put back in the play field. Um, and then we need to we need to swap the pop bumpers too, though. You know, the one that caught on fire. Okay, folks. So we have finished putting it all back together. The apron we cleaned up, put back on. The play field we cleaned. Uh, Waxed, no, cleaned, inked the black back in on the bonus ladder, clear coated it, waxed, and then started putting new rubber rings on. So we put new rubber rings on everything, obviously, cleaned up everything. There is a little chip right there. We put new pop bumpers on it, new pop bumper skirts, all of that. There is a little chip right uh, there. All new light bulbs, new flipper rubbers, clean, clean, clean. We found another used plastic for over there to replace the red one that someone had made. Pretty good match, looks good, very nice. We put, uh, clean that all up, new pop bumpers everywhere, I mean a new uh, rubber rings everywhere. There are little rubber rings down underneath. These mushroom bumpers. On well, these ones, when you hit them, it goes up. <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, clean, 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 clean. Came out pretty nice. What do you think? It's about time to play it. It took forever to rebuild that switch. Look, I got stuff all over my hands. Look at that. Boy, I've been working hard on that switch. That burn up. 
So here's the pop bump skirt. This is the one that melted. Here's the uh, here's the other pop bumper. The, this happens a lot. The the sides start breaking out of them whenever they get brittle. That's right where the uh, the uh, ring goes though the metal piece. So, but you know since I rebuilt that switch, it probably won't catch on fire. It looks fine. Probably won't catch on fire again. I just have to keep my eye on it. Make sure. No fire yet. Um, See, so yeah, I got these new. The whole thing was it had already been replaced once. And they didn't do it very good. I did it good. So mine's not going to catch on fire. If you didn't see that other video, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. The thing actually literally caught on fire on video. Go watch the, go watch the tape. There's the old plastic. We'll leave that inside just in case. The day may come when they need it again. Hopefully not. All right, so that's it. So leave your comments down below. Let us know what you think so far. We're obviously not done. We have to actually play the thing and fix it. We have to fix whatever's wrong with it. All we've done so far is just clean, clean, clean. So we're getting as clean as we can and looking as good as we can, but it's not quite ready to go yet. But soon, soon. So in the next video, we will actually play it, make a list of all the stuff that doesn't work right, and then we'll slowly go through it and fix it. What do you think? I think that'd be great. So leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know that, about that down below there is a link to Amazon if you go to that simply anything you buy on Amazon it gives us a tip we're going to revamp that pretty soon and make like a page on our website that you can go to and it because I want to put a list of all the stuff we use that's on Amazon so for instance uh, the wax that we use and things like that and the because people ask us that all the time or the the tools that we use to work on the jukeboxes which are a little a uh, little bit different than some of the other ones uh, and uh, like uh, Mr. Rich's Seaberg books, I'd like to put a link to that and stuff like that because people keep asking us for specific things. So if I had one page with all the links on it, I think that'd be better. So we might do that. And we're also looking into merchandise opportunities. So we, we want to make some t-shirts and some hats and things like that. So we're trying to figure that out. There's several ways to do that, but we're trying to figure out the best way to do it. So we'll probably eventually have like a merchandise link uh, where you can go to our webpage and see the stuff that we have for sale and also the links to stuff on Amazon that... Uh, may be useful to you if you're looking for some of the stuff that we use whenever we're working on these old games. So look for that soon. But until then, we have just a link to Amazon. You can go buy whatever you want there. And that helps us out. So thank you. And then also check out my brother, Donnie. If you don't know about that, that is literally our brother. It should have said our brother, Donnie, because uh, it's, he's Joe's brother too. See, I'm Ron, and my brother is Joe. And then my other brother, my otro uh, her hermano, <laughs> is uh, Donnie, our brother Donnie. Um, so he has his own channel now. If you could check that out, he's pretty crazy. He's even uh, wilder than I am. And you know, I'm an absolute madman sometimes. But uh, he, uh, he and I have recently bought this little tiny grocery store in downtown Jefferson, South Carolina that we've been working on and trying to get fixed up so that we can rent it out. We're trying to revitalize downtown. So that's helping, we believe. So uh, go check that out if you haven't already. I'm over there with him most of the time, but sometimes it's just him, and those videos are even better. So we'll see you on the next one. Leave your comments below, and next time we'll flip and flop.